welcome you, sir, uh, in our webinar in your busy and tough schedule. We also warm welcome to our rector, Professor Dr. Shaukat Parvez, and a pro-rector, Professor Dr. Muhammad, uh, uh, Dr. Mia Saeed Ahmed. Uh, sir, uh, I also welcome all my respected heads and faculty members in our international event. Now I formally start the event with a recitation of few verses of Holy Quran and Nath Sharif by Ms. Aisha Batul. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نون والقلم وما يسطرون ما وإن لك لعجرا غير ممنون وإنك لعلى خلق عظيم صدق الله العظيم كوي Mustafa ka koi misd Mustafa ka kabhi tha na hai na hoga koi misd Mustafa ka kabhi tha na hai na hoga kisi aur dar se rishta kisi aur dar se rishta kabhi tha na hai na hoga koi misd mustafa ka उन्हें खलक करके नाज़ा हुआ खुद भी दस्त कुदरत कोई शाह का ऐसा कोई शाह का ऐसा कभी था ना है ना होगा कोई मिसेड मुस्तफा का कभी था ना है ना होगा कोई मिसेड मुस्तफा Thank you very much, Ms. Aisha Batool. Food Diaries is a new and modern concept which is trending worldwide. For exploring more about this concept, I would like to invite our first international guest speaker, Professor Arora Biono. But uh, before inviting her, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Khalid Saeed Khan for further introduction of Professor Arora Biono. Uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me. Uh, I just want to be sure that the voice is coming across correctly. Aapko awaaz to thik aarhi hai? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is no problem? No, sir. We are listening. Okay. Uh, so, 
I would just like to say a few words in Urdu. Then we will change to English. Or ye bhi kehta chalun ke sabse pehle main shukriya da karna cha raha hoon aap the organizing committee ka that you've given us the opportunity to join this webinar. Professor Bueno ke baare mein kuch bata deta hoon. Ye aapne suna hoga zarur loves garnata. ये गरनाता उर्दू में इसको कहते हैं अंग्रेजी में इसको कहते हैं ग्रनादा ये स्पेनिश में भी ग्रनादा ही कहते हैं और यहाँ पे जो यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ ग्रनादा है ये मुसलमानों ने शुरू की 500 साल पहले यहाँ यूनिवर्सिटी की जो पहली बिल्डिंग है उसका नाम कहलाता है मदरसा तो मदरसे से यूनिवर्सिटी शुरू हुई और 500 साल की इसकी हिस्ट्री है जहाँ से हम आपसे बात कर रहे हैं सिर्फ पाँच मिनट के फासले पे यहाँ पे अलहमरा पैलेस है शायद आपने इसके बारे में भी सुना हो अलहमरा पैलेस और गरनाता तो मुझे ये बड़ी खुशी है कि एक मुसलमान और पाकिस्तानी की हैसियत से मैं यहाँ पे प्रोफेसर हूँ और इस हैसियत में आप लोगों को ज्वाइन कर रहा हूँ प्रेजेंटेशन करने के लिए मेरे हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट है प्रोफेसर बोनो इनकी मादरी जबान तो है स्पेनिश और अंग्रेजी भी बोलती हैं अगर आपको कोई अंग्रेजी में समझने में मुश्किल हो तो प्लीज मुझे बताइएगा ताकि मैं उसको एक्सप्लेन कर सकूं इसके बारे में आप परेशान ना हो क्योंकि मैं समझता हूं कि लोग मुख्तलिफ एक्सेंट से अंग्रेजी बोलते हैं तो हो सकता है कुछ चीजें शायद आपको आसानी से समझ में ना आए लेकिन जो डाइट के सब्जेक्ट के लिहाज से रिसर्च है इसमें प्रोफेसर बोनो जो है वो दुनिया में वर्ल्ड लीडर हैं इनकी स्टडीज जो हैं बड़े टॉप जर्नल्स में पब्लिश हो चुकी हैं मिसाल के तौर पर न्यू इंग्लैंड जर्नल ऑफ मेडिसिन में एक प्रेडीमेड स्टडी है जो कि इनकी पब्लिश हो चुकी है तो इनकी लीडरशिप वर्ल्ड वाइड है और इस वेबिनार के जरिए पाकिस्तान में इनका इंट्रोडक्शन हो रहा है आई एम वेरी हैप्पी अबाउट दैट डॉक्टर सईद ने हमें इनवाइट किया इस छोटे से इंट्रोडक्शन के बाद मैं ट्रांसफर करूंगा ओके सो प्रोफेसर बोनो विल यूज हर पावर पॉइंट शेयरिंग हर पावर पॉइंट फ्रॉम हर स्क्रीन जब इनका पावर पॉइंट शुरू हो जाएगा तो उस वक्त हैंड ओवर कर दूंगा इस दौरान में डॉक्टर सईद या कोई और ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमेटी में से कमेंट करना चाहें या कुछ कहना चाहें तो प्लीज मैं आपको वेलकम करता हूं प्लीज इज डॉक्टर सईद कैन बी कमेंट्स वुड यू लाइक टू लेट अस नो यस Okay, so uh, I so, so shall yeah, I yeah. appreciate? To, shall I appreciate? My name is Professor Dr. Chopat Boyes. So I appreciate really uh, your team and your participation and your support that uh, you have spare time pass to deliver a very important uh, talk today. Okay, so request that. Okay, thank you very much. Please take off the sound. Better now. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank to the to Professor. Mohammad Saeed and Professor Javed Akram to invite me. I am honored to share my time with you and share this webinar about the impact of nutrition on health and disease management. I'm going to 
this what's the no because okay okay uh, like professor Khan has said i am professor in the university of granada in the department of preventive medicine and public health and i am going to start my uh, speak uh, sharing with you a recent uh, picture about COVID, global COVID of death uh, across the 2020. You can see coronavirus is mm, reaching the first position. At the moment, it uh, is in the second position uh, above TV. But this year is not an fortunately is not a normal year uh, every year diabetes is the first um, cause of this and another important this is close related to nutrition and food safety um, in fact globalization is uh, related to a huge increase in overnutrition and non-communicable disease faster than change in undernutrition. So you need to take care about this problem. In Pakistan, the data of WHO show you have an overweight prevalence of 26% near one people out for and uh, close to 10% of obesity with a um, body mass index above um, uh, 30. Every day dietary choices are related to uh, inflammation state hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, overweight, obesity, and also with risk for disease, uh, mainly cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and cancer. How can I... Just one second. Oh. Sorry, one moment. I need... Eh? Es que se me ha ido aquí. Vale. Okay, okay. And this situation is mainly due to a translation from a traditional diet to a westernized pattern of diet, characterized by high level of fatty and processed meat, saturated fat, refined grains, salt, sugar, but lacking in fresh fried and vegetables. Uh, for epidemiology, uh, nutritional epidemiology, uh, traditionally they have studied uh, isolated nutrients, some isolated food, but uh, it's difficult to relate this uh, element with health. Uh, one of the problems is the high level of intercorrelation among some nutrients, uh, most of them with a small effect, difficult to identify, and because we are analyzing at the same time a lot of nutrients and food, it's uh, highly possible to find association by chance, only by chance. This is, mm, this is the reason because uh, nutritional epidemiologists are more interested in studying um, global dietary patterns. From a public health point of view, uh, it's more practical to evaluate the health effect of adherence to the dietary guidelines because mm, the overall patterns of dietary intake is easy for the public for the public to interpret or translate into diet also is a good tool to provide guidance for nutrition intervention and education a healthy dietary pattern is described as those 
rich in health promoting food, including plant based food, fresh fruits and vegetables, antioxidants, nuts, omega 3 fatty acids, and low in saturated fats, trans fats, animal proteins, and added refined sugar. And this healthy pattern is related to lower risk of non-communicable disease, from cardiovascular disease to cancer or diabetes. There are many healthy patterns. Uh, the Mediterranean one is uh, the uh, typical in Spain, the one that I knew better, but there are a lot of other uh, healthy diet pattern like the traditional diet asian diet all of them are higher in plant-based food and lower in animal based food the mediterranean diet so the quieres una pausa para preguntas or uh, is, uh, I, it's up to you shall, well, shall i ask them yes okay okay sorry to uh, start my microphone yes mm -hmm. okay i'm really sorry to disturb professor bueno and uh, presentation i have just noted that there are 130 people in the webinar uh, I, i just wanted to check if people have any comments or questions koi bhi sawal ya koi comment karna chahe to bata de अगर कोई चीज समझ नहीं आई है एक्सेंट की वजह से तो वो भी पूछ रहे इसके बारे में मुझे कोई एतराज नहीं है ना प्रोफेसर भोजनों को इसके बारे में कोई एतराज है प्रोफेसर सईद आप बता दें इस बारे में कुछ कहना चाहें तो डॉक्टर उसवा आप कुछ कहेंगी सर आवर रेक्टर एक्चुअली वांट टू से समथिंग आवाज आपकी नहीं आ रही Sir, our rector want to say something. Our rector, rector, the University of Faisalabad, Professor ah, Doctor yeah. uh, Shaukat Parvez. Yes, actually, okay. he want to say something. Your microphone is on. No. Yes. No, you. Yes, because I I don't find where where uh, I don't find how to stop my micro because now I am sharing. Yeah. Okay, just no, one second. Here is the the audio. Ah, okay. Sir, uh, sir, yeah. finally, uh, continue yeah. continue the presentation. We. Okay, your talk. Please continue the presentation. Okay. Please continue the presentation. Yes. Continue the presentation, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. We're understanding the. Okay. 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 Okay a uh, um, social uh, share of um, meals with traditional cooking methods uh, with uh, local products and uh, with a strong physical activity uh, hydration comes from water or sun infusion and the basis of daily food are fruits and vegetable always cook it with um, olive oil the olive oil is the main characteristic of mediterranean diet low fat dairy products and uh, protein coming from fish poultry eggs and legumes mm -hmm. each of them uh, in consuming in about three serving per week Mm, the consume of red and um, processed meat and potatoes are um, uh, only occasional less than one time per week 
and the same for pastries and cookies. Uh, one of the more conflictive uh, characteristic is wine consumption. In the Mediterranean basin, uh, the usual is drink wine with milk, but in a small amount, in a small quantity. Only one, two glasses per day um, per woman and two or three uh, per man. Uh, I want to share with you the PREDIMED Plus study, the one in which we are trying to modify uh, people um, habit in physical activity and food to um, show how um, the Mediterranean di diet pattern as re is related to um, uh, health. We have a um, controlled randomized study uh, with more than 6,000 participants. All of them are men or women uh, among 55 and 75 years with overweight um, or obesity and meeting at least three criteria of mm, metabolic uh, syndrome. We have tried to control the amount of diabetic people inside the study, and we have actually about a 26% of diabetic people. Uh, one branch of the study is uh, exposed to an uh, intensive uh, intervention uh, about uh, Mediterranean diet with some energy restriction, advice about physical activity and behavioral, behavior, behavior, oh, sorry, behavior, uh, uh, um, trying to modify behavior. The other, the control group is mm, on Mediterranean diet, the usual advice. The primary end point is mm, acute myocardial infarct, non-fatal stroke or CV mortality, cardiovascular disease mortality. Uh, also, loss weight and change in waist circumference are addressed. We have a lot of secondary endpoints, total mortality, heart failure, atrial fibrillation, cancer, diabetes, and degenerative disorder, and other. And a lot of intermediate outcomes like change in nutrient intake and overall food patterns, change in blood pressure, lipid concentration, uh, hemoglobin AC, A1C, uh, and other, other, and you can mm, ch check if you are interested in. This is a multi-center study in the University of Granada. We are only one of the 23 recruitment centers, and at the moment, we have recruited uh, 6,874 people randomized into two groups, uh, 3,400 uh, in the intervention group, uh, 3,400 CTH in the control group. And uh, we start to recruit in 2013 until uh, 2016. At the moment, we are going uh, follow. For, we are um, follow up um, people for four or more years. The intervention are based in Mediterranean diet. You use the uh, uh, mm, MEDAS score to uh, evaluate, to assess the mm, degree of adherence to Mediterranean diet and to try to modify this diet. Uh, the use of olive oil and the quantity of olive oil, 
the number of servings of vegetable, fruit, red meat, water, and like you can see, one uh, some of these of these items are positive, and another one are negative. To and each item that you comply to one with uh, add one point to the global score. We have adapted the Mediterranean diet adherence score to include re refines and whole grains, trying to promote the intake of whole grains over refined grains. And so we are also uh, taking into account white bread. And, uh, uh, Arur, can we ask people if they will like to comment in Pakistan? What is their opinion about okay about okay. this type yes, of question? Okay, so uh, I switch on my microphone. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Yes, sir. Uh, Professor Bono was interested in knowing what is the diet pattern in Pakistan. So, they showed their slides and there were many points to record. Uh, do you mind showing your slide again, Aurora? If you comment on this, do you comment on this in Pakistan? <coughs> Point number one ke lihaas se, olive oil, is ke baare mein yeah. kya aapki comment hai, vegetable ke baare mein, or fruit ke baare mein. To is tarah se, Professor Bono ko bhi zara education ho jayegi ke, humare mulk mein kya pattern hota hai. Thank you, Khalid. Uh, this is Javed Akram. Thank you so much, uh, for, uh, Professor uh, Arora, uh, for such a wonderful talk. Uh, uh, there are many, many things, you know, which are common in Spanish diet and Pakistani diet. Uh, and there are many, many things which are different. Uh, the main problem, uh, the studies that we did in Pakistan uh, are the quality of oil. Uh, incidentally, um, uh, uh, the University of Hasselabad, uh, Said Saab, uh, they also have a very big uh, oil plant. And they know it more than we do that in Pakistan, uh, predominantly we are using uh, saturated fats either as uh, ghee, which solidifies on cooling, or uh, even if we are using uh, um, vegetable oils, uh, the base oil is unfortunately the palm oil. And as you know, palm oil has been not considered uh, fit for, and this is for across the board, all the uh, oil producing companies, they are using mainly palm oil, which is imported from um, Malaysia mainly and uh, other countries. Uh, and they, of course, blend it with some olive oil or with the, some uh, things um, uh, like this. Uh, so uh, uh, that is the main difference. And we have done many, many studies. We have published many data that just by changing the nature of the oil, you can control dyslipidemia and remember that uh, uh, we do uh, we have two extremes in Pakistan, uh, extreme malnutrition and extreme overnutrition. And uh, we uh, in Pakistan uh, tend to gain weight uh, in the tummy uh, waist circumstance, which means more insulin resistance because of more liver fat. Uh, one study that we just published recently is about adiponectin. Adiponectin, as we all know, is a very good peptide produced by, uh, there are so many bad things produced by uh, fat cells, um, um, inflammatory um, uh, interleukin 6, 12, and so many things. But one good thing that fat cell produce is adiponectin. Unfortunately, in Pakistani fat cells, we don't see them producing adiponectin a lot. And also Pakistanis are adiponectin resistant. So that is the reason that even at a very low level of dyslipidemia, we get diffuse atherosclerotic disease all over. And um, I, we think on the genetic side, there's not much we can do, but on the other side, 
yellow, yellow. On the other side, um, uh, uh, on the environmental side, we are also not winning because uh, of our eating habits and excessive use of oil and oil also palm oil based oil. So these are uh, the atherogenic factors as compared to um, Spain or uh, Mediterranean diet, which obviously is in vogue these days. Thank you. Achha, Professor Akram, thank you very much. I think it would be very helpful both for Professor Bueno and also for the audience if you could make a little bit of comment about the difference between olive oil and ghee, because ghee yeah. is, I you believe, know, quite dangerous. No, I, I actually it's not. Uh, for us, you know, we are now promoting ghee which does not have any contamination from palm oil or, and which have less oxidative stress. Of course, the calories per volume uh, is uh, more. Magar, magar, the olive oil, interestingly, has the highest melting point. Uh, it's a very high uh, melting point uh, out of oils. And so it doesn't evaporate. So you need very little of olive oil as compared to ghee or any other oil to do the same job because it, the evaporation is very little and the uh, melting point is very high of um, uh, the olive oil. Olive oil obviously is monounsaturated and it's very expensive. Very few people can afford pure olive oil. So what the uh, majority of the companies over here, they are doing, they are blending it with the palm oil and is calling canola wave and, or things like that. It's a, these are blended oil. Uh, pure olive oil in Pakistani cooking is not very suitable because, uh, as I said, keep saying the melting point and, and what people are doing is using it as seasoning on top of uh, um, their uh, uh, Italian diet or uh, things like that or on the top of uh, uh, pastas or top of uh, salads. That's OK, but uh, the olive oil is accessible to less than three to four percent of the population of Pakistan. Majority of the population, they cannot afford ghee. Ghee is uh, the natural product coming out of the um, uh, 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 milk. Uh, it's a uh, uh, milk drive product. And if in pure form, it's not that atherogenic. And uh, we are actually going back to ghee. And now, as compared to the oils, which are palm oil based oils. Another thing I think uh, important thing is that uh, uh, we do not have that much access to seafood, uh, which uh, obviously, if, even if we have access, we export it. Majority of the seafood is not utilized. Uh, per capita use of seafood is very, very low in Pakistan as compared to the European countries. It will be very, very good if Professor Aurora, you yourself, and can have a collaborative study with us, and we can look at the dietary pattern and the effects of diet, which is much more important. In Spain, I know you have, uh, at, uh, you, uh, you have again cardiovascular disease as number one killer, so do we have. The difference is that we have diffuse disease, and we get atherosclerotic disease uh, at a much lower body weight. Uh, and as we know that we are not bothered about total weight now, we are bothered about waste. We preferentially gain weight over the waste, which produces more liver fat and more insulin resistance, while you tend to have globosity all over. Uh, <clears throat> and that is why uh, I, in Pakistan, if you test Pakistani population, 90 five percent of people without any disease without diabetes or hypertension they have insulin resistance by a glucose cross clamp technique techniques <clears throat> so it will be very good if we can put up a study together a collaborative research university of granada and our universities together <clears throat> this will be a very very good study looking at uh, the undernutrition part and the overnutrition part and uh, having different genetic setup and also looking at Pakistanis like you who are settled in Spain, that what happens when they are carrying that those genes, what happens there uh, with the environment. So it Achha, will be a Professor study. Akram, I have a question from you. This climate, where we are 
अंदलुसिया और गर्नाता में हमारे लाहौर मुल्तान की तरह ही फैसलाबाद की तरह ही है लेकिन हमारे मुल्क में ऑलिव ऑयल हम क्यों नहीं ग्रो करते यहाँ पे तो तकरीबन हर आदमी का एक कोई ना कोई छोटा सा फील्ड होता है जो अपना ही उनको ऑलिव ऑयल ऑलिव ट्री लगाते हैं एक्चुअली हम आई वॉज जस्ट एक्सप्लेनिंग माई क्वेश्चन टू प्रोफेसर बोनो I was asking him why in Pakistan we don't have olive trees, whereas in Spain it's very common. Even though the weather is the same. Well, I don't know why. I don't know why you don't have olive trees in Pakistan. But what we need is to identify uh, what food in Pakistan are healthy food. Ah, uh, what not? The, so we 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 need to uh, to will a uh, Pakistani score healthy food score replacing olive oil if you can for olive oil and uh, um, uh, promoting vegetable fruit. Uh, and other healthy food over um, red and processed meat, uh, bakery, and so on. I regret my um, uh, ability to explain myself is not enough to go into, but we can work in this uh, kind of, uh, uh, in this, uh, Uh, identification, trying to identify healthy food and score healthy food according to traditional cook methods, and also identify and communicate people what kind of food they should avoid. Uh, okay, so it would be very Thank helpful. Actually, Khalid, uh, what you said, uh, the government is uh, importing a lot of olive trees from Spain, and in fact, uh, I was chief executive. Very well, Professor the... Javed Akram, I'm saying that you have probably microphone muted. Uh, can Can you hear me now? Now, are you coming? आ रही आवाज आपको खाली कैन यू हेयर यस सर यस सर वी आर हियरिंग यू या एक्चुअली द गवर्नमेंट ट्राइड ऑलिव ऑयल एंड दे इंपोर्टेड फ्रॉम स्पेन लॉट ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड दे हैव ए कोलैबोरेशन विद द स्पेनिश गवर्नमेंट एंड आई प्लांटेड 5000 ऑलिव प्लांट्स इन माय प्रीवियस हॉस्पिटल व्हिच इज पाकिस्तान इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेस इन इस्लामाबाद uh the or, the trees do grow but the fruit yield is very very little somehow it's with to do with the water or the soil or they are still pondering about it and the olive quality is also they are not that big and one when you extract the olive oil out of them the yield is very very little on the first press and the second press uh, third press there is hardly any yield coming out of it so i think um, uh, our universities agriculture universities are still struggling but um, obviously olive oil is uh, one of the best things that can happen uh, because not only it takes care of your um, uh, is the only intervention which is very good in the diet for to increase your hdl and in pakistanis we have very very low hdl levels the good cholesterol is very very low and also uh, we have uh, very uh, even uh, vldl cholesterol and things like that we have small particle cholesterol which is more atherogenic to the endothelium and uh, once it's oxidized in the endothelium it's much more atherogenic and also we have uh, uh, we do not have that high cholesterol total cholesterol levels but uh, the particle size is small and more atherogenic and i think one of the reason is the less use of um uh, olive oil so uh, once we have our own uh, we can find out the solution to the agriculture and have good yield um, like spain um, then probably uh, 
uh, that will be a lot of advantage to us. Okay, so I think we return back to Professor Bueno's presentation. I hope you have all noted that Professor Bueno extended an invitation to create a dietary index specific for the culture and dietary pattern inside uh, Pakistan. And she has extended this invitation as a research partner to colleagues joining in this uh, webinar. Professor Bernard, would you like to take over? I, I, I think uh, one point. Hello, are you getting me? Uh, I would like to. Uh, are you getting me? Please. Hang up that uh, three nuts, almond, uh, pistachios are also a good source of um, monounsaturated fat and with a um, big effect over cholesterol. Yeah? And this is the, you can find in Pakistan a lot of these products. Uh, well, I, I wanted to show some of the uh, uh, main result of the pre-med study until now. And um, the first one is that uh, even in um, adult people, we can change the uh, habits eh? and um, to increase the adherence to Mediterranean diet with a significant result. Here you have any one of the items in the uh, predimed score, in the um, adherence to Mediterranean diet score, um, basal, six and 12 months. And we can see how we increase the intake of um, extra virgin olive oil, uh, vegetable, fruits, uh, and also the adherence to less intake of red meat and butter, and so on. One of the most mm, impressive results is the increase of total oil consumption in a population that mm, have usually have a high intake of intake, and mainly uh, is, uh, on behalf of uh, extra virgin olive oil consumption and not the refin, refin, refined one, refined olive oil with better uh, good properties. Uh, we have also increased the average fruit consumption and the average vegetable consumption, both in the intervention branch and in the control one, but with a higher increase in the uh, intervention group. Legumes and nut consumption also increase from the beginning of the study, and also they are very uh, highly positive. We have changed the kind of cereal consumption uh, decreasing the refin, refin, refined grain consumption and increasing the whole grain consumption. This is another interesting point that we can share in Pakistan, like in Spain. Uh, the same for um, poultry of red meat consumption. Poultry is cheaper, it's more affordable than red meat and is um, good for health. And uh, I understand the problem with fish consumption. It fish is not e easily available, but uh, still we can put the focus in another kind of food. And we, ha we, we have to avoid the increase in industrialized cookery. The, Industrialist bakery replacing the traditional diet. I'm, I don't going to speak about alcohol because I understand that it's a different culture, but uh, one of the main effects are also the 
a lot of weight eh? in not too impressive but uh, we have um, get a uh, average of three uh, kilos less and we are um, keeping this uh, weight loss also if we measure it in terms of body mass index or uh, it will translate to the um, movement on LDL cholesterol. Eh? The uh, achievement are uh, not too impressive but are um, progressive. Uh, we have also some good result in systolic and diastolic blood pressure. And to finish, the more important message is that a healthy diet is anyone which uh, could provide uh, macronutrients in appropriate proportion to support energetic and physiologic need, avoiding over uh, consume and providing sufficient micronutrients and hydration to meet all the needs of the body. And what is, is important is to make healthy eating accessible, achievable, achievable and sustainable uh, using local products. So it's not mm, we, we, need, we need to find the way to um, achieve this, uh, this important mission, making healthy eating accessible, achievable and sustainable. Thank you very much. And if you want to make some question, I, uh, I will be happy if I am able to answer you. Thank you. Sure, uh, I have. Uh, Check on the microphone. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I, okay, so. Uh, Dr. Khaled, uh, I'm getting. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Can you, may I have come in some question? Hello, it's Shokat speaking from the University of Islamabad. Hello, Mr. Khaled, yes. I'm getting you, please. Yes, okay. sir, we are hearing you. Okay, fine. So, uh, so I have uh, so a uh, uh, question, comment for you to comment. Yes, yes. Of nutrition on the aging process. If you know, I have a question from Professor Bruno and I have one comment. If you know, if she allow me. Hello. Hanji, I, I'm Hanji. sorry, I, I'm getting cut off. Please, uh, Dubara Bataye, Kya Kareya. मैं ये कह रहा था कि भी मेरे छोटे से कमेंट्स भी है क्वेश्चन भी है इफ यू अलाउ मी इट्स इट इज रिगार्डिंग द प्रोबायोटिक्स नो इट्स नॉट अ स्टडी हैज बीन मेड ऑन द प्रोबायोटिक्स एंड अंडर ऑन द कोलेस्ट्रॉल एज वेल क्योंकि वो उसमें ये को डीकॉन्जुगेट करते हैं एक स्पेसिफिक जो स्ट्रेंस है प्रोबायोटिक्स ये और वो एलडीएल को जाना जी वो डीकॉन्जुगेट करके ना जी बैड कोलेस्ट्रॉल को रिड्यूस करते हैं और इम्यूनिटी में बहुत ज्यादा इसका रोल है स्पेसिफिक जो है ना प्रोबायोटिक्स है इट्स नॉट अ स्टडी हैज बीन मेड नाउ इन द वर्ल्ड एज वेल एंड आई एम आल्सो वर्किंग ऑन इट ऑन द प्रोबायोटिक्स सो डू यू हैव एनी कमेंट्स ऑन इट बिकॉज़ आई फाउंड दैट दे हैव नॉट इंक्लूडेड आई मीन दिस सेक्टर रिगार्डिंग द आई मीन यूज ऑफ प्रोबायोटिक फॉर द हेल्थी डाइट सो डू यू हैव टू कमेंट्स ऑन इट Okay, so बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया. I think we are nearly one hour into our ninety minutes session. Maybe it's a good idea if Professor Bono give a quick answer Please. to effect of nutrition on aging. Very quick comment, and then Professor Shaila Akram can proceed to her presentation to make sure we do not overrun our time. Thank you. Uh, as you know, a healthy diet is related to a lower inflammatory state. So, a healthy diet is also related to a healthy aging. 
and is also related to better cognition and lower risk of non-communicable disease like cardiovascular or cancer disease. Uh, the main foundation is the low inflammatory state. So if you have less oxidative stress, you have um, better health in general, better aging or healthy aging. And um, uh, longer um, life duration, uh, life lasting. Thank you. Okay, so I think we can hand back to the master of ceremony uh, so that uh, you can continue with the program. And yes. I'm sure we will be happy to take any questions towards the end. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Arora Bionu, for such inspirational knowledge. So to learn about the COVID-19 and healing impact of nutrition in the COVID-19 positive patients, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Shaila Javed to present our topic. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful to Professor Abad University that they have given me a chance to speak on such an, uh, to such an august gathering. Uh, I'm a very small contributor in nutrition as compared to the to the rich knowledge that we just uh, uh, heard. Uh, my uh, uh, I practice nutrition in Pakistan for the last 22 years, and uh, the topic, the current topic, like pandemic of COVID pandemic. According to that, I restricted myself more onto COVID management. So my topic would be around this impact of nutrition on COVID and disease management. Next. Uh, sorry, ma'am, for uh, interrupting you. Your camera is actually not visible. Your face is actually oh. not cleared. Yes. Yes. Now is it? Now is it clear? Is it clear now? Can you see yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. But you can hear me. Yes, yes. We all are hearing. Okay, so can I have the next slide, please? Sir? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Can you change the slide, please? Yeah. So, COVID 19, uh, also commonly called Corona, pandemic is causing a lot of changes in the daily lives of people around the world. But there are things that can be done to maintain a healthy lifestyle in these difficult times. Can we have the next one, please? COVID-19, I mean, the basic things like physical distancing and good hygiene are the best protection for yourself and others against COVID-19. But there are still things that we can do to keep up our immunity and to try to protect ourselves from this pandemic. Can we have the next one, please? So my what I'm mainly talking about is the good nutrition and how it can actually help to maintain immunity. And God forbid, if somebody has is suffering from COVID, so how can good nutrition play an important role before during and after infection. So it is also, you have to be very concerned at what we are doing during the infection. And then there's, there's, there's malaise and there's a lot of weakness after COVID and what to do after an infection. Next one, please. As, as everybody knows, there is a basic thing that infections, that they, they are at all on the body, especially when this cause fever and the body needs extra energy and nutrients. So there's a list of all these um, uh, food. Just I want you to display that, just, just to give an idea that what foods are made, I mean, out of the main vegetables and the fruit foods and the nuts which are, which are present, what should be our choice? Mainly like, I mean, there's, a, there's a, just a picture uh, presentation that what sort of food should be the choice to get that extra nutrition and energy. Can we have the next one, please? But the question is that, is there any food that boosts our immune system against COVID-19? 
this is the question which every patient asks you and everybody is concerned and a lot of you know information is flooded in that what can actually boost the immune system but so far there is no food or dietary supplements which can prevent covid-19 infection but maintaining a healthy diet rich in copper folate selenium zinc iron vitamin b12 b6 c and d are an important part of supporting the strong immune system so you know these uh, these uh, i mean what uh, all this uh, 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 copper and micronutrients folate and selenium and zinc they already are a part of a diet but we have to be little more careful and concerned that which fruits and vegetables can provide us with a better source of all these micronutrients and uh, and lately these micronutrients have been like the market has flooded with uh, these uh, uh, capsules of zinc and capsules of folate and iron and you know multiple uh, combinations so that is all part of the um, covid pandemic that people started flooding the market because, and, and but because of this flood um, the market uh, i am i am i am pleased with one thing that public did get an awareness on these micronutrients and they did start thinking that how uh, what alternatives can be brought or what additions can be made in the diet so that they can have a constant source of these micronutrients so this awareness i think will go a long way and people will start uh, uh, will be careful more in deciding the menus of uh, daily daily routine what they take what they eat and i'm sure that uh, people will start thinking of adding and being careful and selective in in getting more of these fruits which are which are which otherwise they were not very keen on counting them i mean it's more of counting these fruits and nuts and vegetables that you take every day i mean which will actually give you a better source of these micronutrients there is another notion that we have this impression that if you are not living in a place which is uh, which has a provision of all these uh, supplements and nutrients so the thing can be done no it's not that way i mean what i believe is that there is a lot that we know about how to select the right combination of food it's only the knowledge that we should have and it is a healthy diet regardless of where ever we are living it is not it is not area restricted i mean it is the awareness that one should have and there is always a possibility to get this micronutrients from wherever you are living so what we recommend is that eat a variety of food within each food group and across all the food groups so it's more of taking uh, helping from a variety of foods and vegetables so that you are not wrong you don't go wrong it is not like just restricting yourself to likes and dislikes of few bread few fruits and few vegetables and i mean and that's uh, i mean then because uh, you don't have a likeness for a certain fruit or you don't have a likeness for certain vegetables it doesn't work that way one must try and have a, a bigger selection from a bigger group of foods i mean this japanese uh, uh, practice that they try to target 40 to 50 ingredients per day in their food so that's very interesting because the japanese i i actually follow their uh, their practice because and i encourage my patients to uh, to to try to follow what japanese are doing because they make they make sure that they uh, their intake is around 40 to 15 ingredients every day which then satisfies what i'm saying that we should have a, a food a choice of food groups from across all the foods So eat plenty of fruits and vegetables again and again i'm saying the same thing fresh fruits and vegetables provide lots of vitamins and minerals as well as fiber that we need for healthy diet to limit your trip to the market or supermarket nowadays in covid in addition to fresh fruits and vegetables you can also buy frozen or canned fruits and vegetables but we have to know how to read the labels of these frozen and canned foods 
in the canning and processing of these products sometimes other ingredients such as sugar and salt or preservatives are added and this is actually not recommended so be sure to read the label be a good reader and that also will give you awareness that what sort of food is in the stores that you go to and what foods you are going to accept and what foods you are going to reject so please read the labels so that you can choose the options that are the best for you and your family in order to limit the intake of these ingredients consume a diet rich in whole grains nuts and healthy fats such as in olive so much as we talked about olive sesame peanut or other rich oils rich in unsaturated fatty acids now why we go on uh, stressing the same point that take whole grains and take nuts because in our country in pakistan most of the practices that they only take nuts during the winter season and they avoid taking nuts throughout the year so it's actually like taking the nuts like two months or something like that and rest of the 18 months they actually avoid the nuts because they think that it doesn't suit their body in in heat i mean when the temperature is hot so i actually encourage and uh, uh, the, the nuts throughout the year and grains and nuts throughout the year and i say i also encourage change of oils i mean what my practice is that i encourage to change the oils in your list of shopping i mean keep on changing a seed of the oil like uh, corn oil to sunflower oil to sesame oil to keep on changing the uh, seed which has a better effect on your nutrition than sticking to one one source of oil and then but what what is important that we have to watch the intake of fats sugars and salt and people in times of high stress like nowadays in, uh, in, in covid pandemic people are sitting at home and they are under stress because there's nothing much to do in their whole time they're sitting home and munching on different things so use food as and they these people are using food as a comfort which can lead to over consumption and weight gain foods in which we find comfort are often very palatable because they are high in fat sugar salt and calories so try to avoid eating too much of these ingredients not only as comfort foods but across everything you eat food labels are again very helpful here so that consumers can limit the purchasing and eating of these ingredients that should be found only in limited amounts in a healthy diet practice good food hygiene this is very important because the risk of contracting covid-19 from touching contaminated food packaging as most of the people started thinking in our country this is very low and has not been so far reported but because of covid-19 pandemic food safety has fever become a point of concern fever covid-19 is a respiratory virus that we should not forget it is not a food one disease but the contaminated food packaging can play a role in but still it is not been true that people are going crazy after that washing the packaging and spraying the packaging and i mean they're washing the vegetables and then i mean all these practices being done which actually is creating more stress in the family uh, of like uh, i mean because this is another point of concern which is does not been true but people are now practicing it which i think is rather more of a point of stress rather than any basis support and how do we support food safety the same thing is that we have to keep the place that we cook that should be clean i mean the kitchen should be clean the kitchen should be the shelves should be clean they should be sprayed the separate raw and cooked food is very important don't try don't mix the raw food and the cooked food and and uh, uh, and half cooked food avoid that it's better to have a well cooked thoroughly cooked food and then the food which which is left over should be kept safe at at a, at a good temperature in the refrigerators make sure that your refrigerators are working and the water itself is use safe water and the raw material also have to be you have to be very you have to be little fussy about what sort of raw material you are using in preparation of food about the water this is yes in important point that one should remain hydrated well hydrated taking like 8 to 10 glasses of water 
which helps boost our immune system. Drinking plain water instead of sugar sweetened beverages that should also be discouraged and also helps reduce the risk of consuming too many calories for maintaining a healthy weight because weight gain is another factor, important factor, which affects your immune system. If you gain weight while sitting at home for four months during COVID pandemics, I mean, you are bound to also affect your challenge your immunity. When the alcohol, we do, I mean, we don't actually uh, discuss uh, alcohol consumption a lot in our country, but the comment is always there that limit, decrease the consumption of alcohol, limit the consumption of alcohol, but this also has a lot of calories and sugar. So the main thing what people are now talking is that they've discussed about so many supplements uh, that they can boost immunity in COVID. I mean, there's a variety of supplements, but so far, no evidence or nothing has improved so far as the, about their health claim that any supplement can boost our immune system or prevent or treat any viral infections like COVID-19. But whatever supplements the public is recommended, that should be a part of our diet. There is no harm in that. But like thinking that this will boost our immunity, there is no evidence so far to support this idea. The other question which very frequently came to my clinic is, can mothers suffering from COVID-19 still breastfeed? WHO recommends that the mother sh sh can continue breastfeeding, but she also has to follow the same four precautions, like wearing a mask while she's feeding, and washing the same way for 20 minutes, 20 seconds. Disinfecting the surfaces, the nipple and the breast every time she feeds, the, before she starts feeding the infant. And sterilizing and disinfecting the breast pump, if at all she's using the breast pump. The other question was that whether this is again frequently asked that which water should they drink, what sort of water, like a bottled water or a boiled water, or uh, what sort of water they should be drinking. The virus so far has not been detected in drinking water, although it can remain active in water for a very short period of time, but it is actually not linked with the spread of COVID so far. The thing which we've learned during pandemic is that many people have got jobless, they have, uh, they have lost their incomes. So community support has actually Taken a big, I mean, it's a big forward step in our community and everywhere in the world that we that we see on that we get from the information from the media. So people have, in addition to that, people had continued buying food online and get it delivered during uh, to their homes. But this many people then, I mean, they they took it like the same routine, like buying it from the supermarkets or the online retailers. But there were others who started supporting the agriculture system, the community agriculture system, which was a good idea for small farmers, because then these farmers, if they could sell it directly to the consumer, they did not have to go to the market, where they will again be um, um, uh, gathering together and could, be, could become a source of spread of coronavirus. So people, the community, they did try and they became aware of buying it from the local growers and the local uh, farmers so that A, they can be helped and B, they do not have to go to the markets to sell and, and to go into gatherings and put themselves into risk and, and other people also at risk. So there are certain countries that also implemented strict lockdown and physical distancing regulation for the food, but they also put in measures that they protected access to food. And that, I mean, they had a quota for the, for, for the excess of food. And, and so far, I have not had experienced widespread disruption in food supplies in those countries where they had restricted a quota on the food. Unlike our country, we did not put any, any, any quota, any restriction onto the excess of food, which have led to some disruption in some food items in our country, which could have been avoided. So that was a good practice. And the way we could, in, uh, when the government is not making a policy of, food, of, of, uh, of announcing the quota of food, what we can practice at that level is, again, uh, again a community support that we, we should limit, we should make our portions smaller and try not to have leftovers 
and we should sm shop smart by i mean it was like a recommendation that buy the fruit which is ugly fruits and vegetables which are like they're lying there for two three days and they're not fresh so that they can be utilized and do not overload the fridge and first come first out is that is first uh, first in and first out is again that will uh, uh, make you uh, uh, save yourself save you from wasting the food and understand and follow the dates on the food and turn waste into compost that is one of the practices that some house, households were doing because all this leads to caring for others if we start leaving some food for others so that this this shortage of food is not there i mean if the if the policy is not, not there by this small practice we can actually contribute to help reduce the shortage of food and not to waste the food so I mean, in addition to that, uh, I was only talking about healthy food, but there are certain other four uh, things that we should not forget. That since COVID pandemic, we have started, we have, is, is, it has disrupted our sleep. People sleep late and they get up late and they are not able to get an adequate sleep at proper sleeping hours. So try to get adequate sleep because this plays a very important role in immunity booster, in, in boosting immunity. Minimize in coping with stress. Try to go for, like, uh, spend time with your family. Uh, practice yoga. Practice those exercises which can help you cope stress. And try to get rid of the smoking. And try to reduce smoking if you can't get rid of it. And the habits that you were previously in, like you were exercising regularly, and now they've uh, and then. In these four months, the gyms were closed and the parks were closed, but still there is a lot of ways, different ways that you can still continue exercising. And, and, and these four things, if one follows, in addition to eating healthy foods, I mean, there are good chances that, you, that your immunity will, that you will maintain your immunity. And it should have a computer role to play to avoid COVID infections. And, and with that, and uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, I'm open to any questions. Thank you very much, ma'am. We get a lot of information regarding the role of nutrition in uh, the prevention and management of COVID-19. So uh, the weight management is a difficult task of everyone's life. And everyone is conscious about it these days. Uh, females are more rather than the male population. But all they try is fails during the pregnancy. So to discuss and learn how to manage the weight during the pregnancy, I would like to invite our next international guest speaker, Professor Dr. Khalid Saeed Khan. OK, so thank you. Thank you very much. I just want to be sure that you are able to hear me. Can you please confirm that? Yes, sir, we are hearing. OK. Good. Well, that's great. So I will share my screen and uh, take over my PowerPoint presentation. Yes, sure, sure. I'm sorry, my computer is interfering with something. Let me see. Why am I having this problem? I may have to quit and come back now. I apologize for that. Give me just a second. Hello. Hello, Dr. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you will uh, take the questions at the end of the uh, uh, whole of this process. If we have sufficient time, only then you will be uh, having questions. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are you able to see my screen? 
Yes, sir. That's fantastic. So, uh, thank you for uh, uh, for this invitation. I would like to thank Professor Bueno and uh, Dr. Shella for excellent presentations. Uh, I actually do not have a very long presentation. Uh, I would like to say a few words about myself uh, because I have found in uh, other settings that people like to know how I got to where I am. Plus, I would like to let the audience know that uh, I have recently set up a website for myself, for especially for people in Pakistan to get to know me better. And I'll encourage you to reach me through the website. Today, I will be uploading a blog concerning nutrition in pregnancy. So what I have to say and any questions that you may have for me can be can be addressed via the blog and any comments. I would like to say not just about nutrition in pregnancy, but also about how to improve nutrition research quality. It's very important that uh, people engaged in nutrition education and practice in Pakistan should also engage in nutrition research just as the example of University of Granada leading a worldwide impactful study on Mediterranean diet and its impact on cardiovascular disease uh, and metabolic disease. So, the, so some of the key things about getting research published is about writing an effective abstract about how to engage with editors and peer reviewers how to write an effective manuscript and to respond to peer review. We won't have time to cover all this in detail, but I need to highlight this for the audience that managing this process is as important as conducting the research, as learning some general knowledge about uh, nutrition and nutritional practice. Uh, so please don't ignore these aspects of the role expected of a university that focuses on nutrition. Uh, and I would be very happy to take part in development in this area. Very quickly about my own background, I started medical school in 1983 in Karachi. I then proceeded to learn about the practice of medicine as a house officer in Kenya. I then returned to Pakistan to complete my fellowship from the College of Physicians and Surgeons. I moved to Canada to learn about research. And then I had a career spanning nearly uh, 25 years in the UK uh, at various universities, particularly in Birmingham, and the last 10 years at Queen Mary University of London. And I am really happy to have the opportunity to take a sabbatical a few years ago at University of Granada. And now I have moved to the University of Granada. And on your screen on the bottom right hand side, you can see an image of the Alhambra Palace. And as I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, myself and Professor Bueno, we are talking to you only at a five minute distance uh, from this uh, grand palace, which is one of the wonders of the world. So going back to my research career, when I returned from Kenya to Pakistan after uh, my house job, I had the opportunity to publish my first paper, which I show you now on the screen on the left hand side. Uh, this was in uh, 1990. So I'm talking to you with nearly 30 years of experience of uh, research and publication. My research training in uh, Canada at McMaster University prepared me for meta-analysis and systematic reviews. 
And my first systematic review was published 25 years ago. Uh, throughout this time, I have had the opportunity to edit various journals, including evidence-based medicine. And I've published a book on systematic reviews. And I have been chief editor of the British Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology for six years. And having finished my term as chief editor, one of my missions is to engage in effective writing of research. Uh, so I hope there'll be an opportunity to engage in webinar in detail over how to get research published uh, in, in the future, both in Faisalabad and in University of Health Sciences in Lahore. A lot of my research has been cited by others. There are more than 30,000 citations to my research. And I have been invited in more than 37 countries to present my research. But for me, the most important thing is what I show you in this slide, in this part of the slide, which is reflected in this orange line. The most important thing is not my number of publications. The most important thing is that nearly uh, 60 million people have given their data for analysis and presentation in the 400 papers I have had a chance to publish. So research participants in form of our patients is what makes me most proud of my achievements in my career. Moving on quickly to relationship of my research with respect to pregnancy. I had the chance to publish uh, and lead a group on meta-analysis concerning weight management in pregnancy. And over the years, it developed into a network, international network for meta-analysis. And this is a meta-analysis of randomized control trials of nutrition and lifestyle in pregnancy. This network includes all these countries in uh, in various continents of the world. And I would be most proud if in the future we can have a center from Pakistan with a randomized control trial of nutritional and lifestyle management in pregnancy to become part of this network. So I extend an invitation to colleagues in this webinar to come forward put forward your research data for collaborative use in this uh, individual patient data meta-analysis project. I'd like to remind you that my own research in this field was motivated by this paper. And in this paper, Professor Bueno is a part of the PREDIMED uh, study investigators team. And their conclusion was that extra virgin olive oil and nuts in form of almond and walnut can reduce the incidence of major cardiovascular events. So when we read this work from Professor Bueno, uh, published in this high ranking journal, New England Journal of Medicine, we thought as to why we should not consider the same intervention for pregnant women. Pregnancy is one of those moments when an individual in society comes in contact with the healthcare system. So it gives us a window of opportunity to intervene, to encourage people to adopt a lifestyle in a special time in their life when they are pregnant. And it's a special time for their whole family to benefit from any intervention we might offer them. That if such an intervention has a long term benefit. That this is the time for us to take the opportunity to give them a known effective intervention. So this trial was called esteem. 
It was developed and led from my team in the east of London. East of London has a large ethnic population. Over 50% of the people living in East London where I led this trial were from ethnic groups. And we invited people to join the study. We invited pregnant women who had either lipid problems or high blood pressure or who were obese to take part. And we randomized them into receiving an esteemed diet or continue with their usual diet. And we wanted to follow them up to see whether their pregnancy outcomes are better if they take the esteemed diet. So what is esteemed diet? I will come back to explain that to you in, an, in a second in more detail. But basically, it included extra virgin olive oil and a combination of nuts to be introduced in the normal diet of the family, not just the pregnant woman, but the whole family. And we wanted to see if the pregnancy will be better as a result of such an intervention. And the protocol of this study was published in Contemporary Clinical Trials Journal. You'll be able to find it in this uh, publication. My blog to be published later on today will also include a link to this uh, protocol. So you'll be able to find it through my blog. One of the most important problems in any trial is the number of patients to be recruited. And I'd also like to take this opportunity today to congratulate uh, Professor Javed Akram, who has led a world leading trial in the treatment of COVID in Pakistan. It is the first trial to have reached its target sample size for an interim analysis, which was uh, published in the newspapers and media across Pakistan just last week. It's called the PROTECT study. And nobody other than Professor Akram is best placed to discuss with you the challenges of taking part in a multi-center study. Esteem 2 was a multi-center study and it needed to recruit nearly 3,000 people over a period of just one year. So you can imagine that three or four centers needed to invite 3,000 women to take part in a study where around 1,000 women will be randomized. So put this challenge in your mind and think about how you could be the leader of such an important study uh, by inviting your patients to be part of such a study. This study was published in a top medical journal called PLOS Medicine. And without going into too much detail of each outcome, I will just present to you as soon as this study is published, within a period of 12 months, more than 15,000 people have downloaded this article. So there is a good chance that the research we have now undertaken over many years can be picked up by our colleagues through this publication, and they can then use the key messages from this research to benefit their patients. So can you now see that I invite you to consider the process of publication? We start with publishing the protocol. This encourages people to take part in the study so that when the study begins, people take active interest in recruiting their patients into the study. And then quickly we are able to publish the results. And then these results can be picked up by our colleagues across the world, 15,000 of them, who can pick up the key messages from the research we have taken to benefit their patients and the society. And what are the key messages? The key messages uh, is if you are able to introduce half a liter of extra virgin olive oil in the food you cook for your family, half a liter of olive oil per week, and 30 grams of nuts, walnuts and almonds and the like daily, this simple intervention can 
reduce gestational diabetes by 30 percent. This message alone should be a very strong indicator for an intervention that we can introduce in the family in the window of opportunity that we have during pregnancy when women come in touch with the healthcare system. And this can have a long term effect, not just for the mother, but for the family and for the newborn baby, because when their weight is ideal weight at the time of birth. They are more likely to continue with a lifelong. Avoidance of cardiovascular disease, diabetes and obesity because a healthy start to life is what makes for the avoidance of disease in the future. So this is my key message. I summarize the key message for you one more time. Please take active part in research. Please use research as a nutrition tool. Please publish the protocol of research. Please invite your patients to take part in research. Please participate in multicenter study. Please follow the example of PROTECT trial led by University of Health Sciences in Pakistan. Please publish your findings in top journals. Your findings will benefit very many people across the world, not in just in Pakistan, but for the whole of the world. And these benefits can then benefit your patients and society and reduce illness and ill health worldwide. And to to create a platform for this engagement, I invite you to to look into uh, initiative that I would like to to initiate in Pakistan in the form of a platform called Health Education Research. Here is the Facebook page for this platform. Please take part in this platform and in and through my website in the blogs concerning how research can benefit uh, society with respect to improving lifestyle through nutrition and health. So with this, I would like to bring my presentation to an end. And I would be very happy to take any questions and comments. Uh, I guess at this stage, I will stop sharing my screen and would welcome any comments. I'm sorry I have overrun by 15 minutes uh, and I hope this is uh, not too much. I'm glad there are still more than 100 people present in the audience. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for such an inspiring and eye-opening knowledge. Uh, the question answer session will be, inshallah, at the end of the event. So uh, for the concluding remarks, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Javed Akram, uh, Vice Chancellor, University of Health Sciences, Lahore. Uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, and thank you so much. Uh, it has been a great, great learning experience for me. Wonderful talks. Uh, I think uh, Professor Bruno, uh, Aurora Bruno, she uh, highlighted the importance of nutrition in Spain as well as all over the world. And uh, very impressive talk. We really enjoyed her talk and look forward to collaborate with her uh, and Khalid uh, for collaborative study. I think very, very important. Um, we, we know that uh, we are far from Mediterranean diet as recommended by Khalid. Uh, nuts and uh, extra virgin uh, olive oil. But, uh, I think uh, we can find something simpler, something uh, less expensive for Pakistanis which could match this diet. And I'm sure we can do that once we have the study intact that what are we looking for and uh, especially in people where cardiovascular disease now is rampant in Pakistan and uh, we need to look at it how we can. In, uh, I have 
couple of studies done on in Pakistanis and that intermittent fasting, which is a new, relatively new uh, way of life, and which is used to fast basically to Thursday and Monday, and that's exactly what we are doing uh, in intermittent fasting and we are cooking in Pakistan, which is a hunger hormone. And we think it's a conditionable harm. Next intermittent fasting uh, not only mobilizes your fat, it's important to but also to you to have a eating window. Eight hours and the rest is fasting window in a day. It seems to be very important that you're doing it. Uh, sir, kindly unmute your uh, uh, microphone. Professor Dr. Javed Akram. Uh, sir, kindly uh, unmute your uh, microphone. Sir, kindly unmute your microphone. I'm requesting to Professor Dr. Javed Akram. Sir, on the audio. Sir, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are hearing. Okay. Yes. Um, as I was saying, um, uh, wonderful uh, talks. Uh, the first one by Professor Buno uh, Aurora. Uh, the, it was a pleasure to listen to her and uh, uh, the way she looked at the uh, diet and analyze, analysis was very, very encouraging. And uh, we, uh, we uh, look forward re to work with her and to compare um, the dietary patterns in Spain as compared to Pakistan. Uh, obviously, in Pakistan, the Mediterranean diet uh, where um, extra virgin uh, first um, press uh, olive oil is hardly available or available to very, very few tip of the iceberg people who can really afford very rich. But our problem is really on the base of the pyramid where um, economy is the major problem and we have a huge class difference. So I was just thinking that we have to innovate ways where we can give the benefit of Mediterranean diet to the base of the pyramid, uh, um, uh, which is reachable to their pocket. And we have to find alternatives uh, to extra virgin olive oil, the indigenous oils, and compare them uh, to uh, um, extra virgin oil, olive oil and similarly nuts and um, legumes. They are very, very expensive uh, for a common man to um, uh, afford. But I'm sure we can find many, many indigenously um, available uh, interventions and compare them with the uh, Mediterranean diet. And uh, we look forward to that study if we are able to put it together with the help of Khalid and Dr. Shela, it would be a wonderful study uh, which will um, bring uh, answers to many of our issues uh, because I strongly believe that half of our morbidity and mortality is associated with the poor dietary patterns that we have in Pakistan. And um, as I said, we uh, genetically have tendency to be insulin resistant and um, our diet doesn't do any good at all, uh, energy dense diet and also lots of carbs we are taking and very little protein. So uh, I think uh, we'll have to bring that awareness once we have evidence based uh, strategies intact. Dr. Shaila talked about COVID-19, which is extremely important. But my question is that we know that overreaction or to your immune system kills people. It is uh, when you overreact to the virus, your immune system, especially B cell and T cell mediated immunity, 
uh, when you have cytokine storm and you have a lot of uh, inflammatory mediators, interleukin 1, 6, 12, TNF alpha and so on. So w when we talk of that immune boosting food should be taken, already these individuals have very, very high immunity level. And I think again, this is more or less genetically determined that which patients are going to mount a higher immune, immune response and then damage uh, uh, their livers in this process of antibodies cross-reacting with the virus in the lungs and uh, damaging the battlefield is of course the lungs and um, then ending up with the lung damage and with the inflammation and the capacity of the lung to transfer oxygen from air to blood is gone. Um, but uh, Dr. Shaila very rightly pointed out that uh, we have so many myths in Pakistan. Uh, for example, black seed oil, black seed, um, uh, makhi, and you know so many things that they are being used and misused. And our, uh, as physicians, people are, keep on asking us, <clears throat> what is the value of these things? And we keep telling them, that if it doesn't bring any harm, these herbs and things like that, we do not discourage them. We say continue, but if they are harmful, obviously um, uh, harm benefit ratio, we have to look at these myths. Uh, but she very rightly said that we need to encourage good lifestyle to uh, combat this virus and uh, keep our weight down because we know that obese people have higher mortality, people who smoke have higher mortality because they have more ACE2 receptors in their bronchial violet tree. Um, so uh, very important to keep yourself fit as much as you can with lifestyle modification and to get rid of the smoking and then you will be able to combat it in a better way. Uh, it's always pleasure to listen to Khalid and uh, very impressive profile and we Pakistan must be very, very proud of Khalid and so are we at University of Health Sciences. Uh, we are working quite closely together in so many projects, uh, including the PROTECT trial where um, his contribution uh, is unmatched, his guidance is unmatched, and uh, we would not be in PROTECT where we are now if it wasn't for Khalid uh, to guide us through um, this difficult journey. In Pakistan, we are just entering an era of research. Research was never regulated in Pakistan, but now we have um, National Bioethics Committee. We have local in, uh, institutional review boards. We have ethical review boards. And now we have National uh, Clinical Trials Committee, which is based in Islamabad, and I am very much part of it. And we um, have inspectors who go around and uh, inspect the study sites, inspect the infrastructure, the HR in these um, uh, research sites, and also all the um, protocols are now approved by the federal government before they, they can go into implementation. Similarly, we now have um, uh, a, a data safety and national data safety and monitoring board, a multidisciplinary board which oversees all the research. So we, we are just getting to have well-regulated research in Pakistan, and I'm sure that will bring a lot of research to Pakistan, because in Pakistan, the easier thing is to do research is very, very quick, because you get approvals uh, in, if it was Europe or US, uh, protect trial would not be approved uh, in about uh, one week that we got the approval. So in Pakistan, it's very quick and it's very inexpensive because the patients do not charge, the investigators do not charge, and the investigations are quite inexpensive, good quality investigations, but inexpensive, and the drugs are intervention, drugs or devices, they are also quite uh, inexpensive. So uh, we look forward to work with Khalid very much. And uh, the pregnancy study, we, we know that in Pakistan, we have huge disease burden from preeclampsia, we have huge disease burden um, from metabolic problems in pregnancy. We have uh, pregnancy-induced hypertension, diabetes, and um, females gain excessive weight in pregnancy um, in Pakistan. And again, we, we, um, uh, it's extremely important to have this collaborative group. 
and to learn from each other and learn from our situation where the awareness is hardly there and um, inshallah we look forward to form these collaborative groups uh, for the benefit of our patients and uh, of course uh, we at university of health sciences are increasingly becoming patient centered and we are indulging into research which will uh, in turn translate into effective and cost effective interventions for our patients i'm very grateful to my dear brother um, said uh, at university of faisalabad hanif saab uh, all uh, and the family uh, for providing us with this great opportunity we it's always a player um, to be part of uh, university of faisalabad which is very much collaborating with university of health sciences we are part and parcel of uh, we, we consider ourselves one organization and the whole team has uh, done wonderfully well to put up this uh, webinar together on a very very important aspect I, this may be the first webinar of its type but i'm sure um, it's not the last one and i am very grateful to khaled um, uh, uh, dr arora bruno and dr shaila and especially uh, my brother uh, said um from faisalabad and his team for such a wonderful time thank you so much thank you very much sir now i would like to invite professor dr shaukat parvez rector the university of faisalabad for vote of thanks bismillah ar rahman ar rahim thank you so first i have one uh, question and comments from the speaker that the one area which i am keep in tracking interested that is the probiotic i think not a work has been done in the world as well now on the specific probiotic especially on the cholesterol and the immunity so i have a question from the, uh, to dr bruno and uh, dr khalid and dr shaila their presentations were excellent but that area was somewhere i mean i think missing because i think a lot of work is being done so far it is going on on the probiotics if they have any comments and solution so please first this so second i would like to thanks to all the speakers and especially thanks goes to the professor dr uh, javeed akram saab and the professor dr mohammed said saab and khalid saab and professor bono and my team at the ucf as well so i thank you and i'm waiting for the comments if they have any comments regarding the probiotics please are you hearing me are you hearing me hello hello ji aap aap are you hearing me hello Yes, sir. We are what hearing is, you. No, what I spoke? Have, have you heard this one? Hello. Hello. Ali, do you want to answer this question? Uh, question of our dear friend, Director. Uh, okay. So, about please, I should not hear the he, question clearly. Could you please? He asked about the. probiotics okay i can thank you yeah okay, okay i would like to i would like to address this question what are probiotics uh, in our diet and uh, very recently we have seen a lot of really liver in pakistanis and uh, we think one of the reason by uh, pakistanis have uh, almost at the normal weight or overweight they have fatty liver nash and fatty liver the reason is the gut microbiota the gut microbiota in pakistan is quite perturbed because of the overuse of antibiotics but i think professor shaukat uh, wants to know your comments about uh, uh, the probiotics uh, which is an extremely important thing in metabolic diseases okay uh, i'm very happy to address uh, this point and if you don't mind i just like to go back to my present my, uh, to present something quickly because Please. unfortunately for me it's very hard to comment on anything without doing research on the topic so 
Uh, let me see if I can share. So you can see this. Uh, can you? No. Uh, not yet. OK. Sorry, I'm not able to show you the correct one at the moment. OK, um, I apologize. This is not working, so I'm going to give you a verbal answer. We, we, we recently we recently completed a randomized trial on the use of probiotics in pregnancy. OK, uh, and. Probiotics is not just one medication. It is many. There are many different types of probiotics. Yes, so we need to discover which is the right All one. Right for an effective healthcare intervention. I do not think we know the answer yet to this question, even though we have commercial products available. I, I, this is my summary answer to the question. We need more research to know what type of probiotic intervention will have proper health benefits. Okay. Uh, that's the end of my answer. But, but Khaled, Khaled uh, we are not properly, we are not talking of drugs. Probiotics is contained in many foods, as you know. And uh, uh, the, uh, what about your experience of uh, consuming foods with have probiotic activities? And which are the foods uh, which okay. uh, can so, you take I, I just like to make a very simple observation. We all know that acid destroys bacteria. The moment we consume something by mouth and it is hit by the acid in the stomach, we need to know that it will survive it in order to reach the rest of the body in order to benefit us. I think this simple question has not been addressed properly so far. So I'm afraid I think there is a potential in probiotic intervention, whether by food or by medication or by buying yogurts commercially produced. But if they in fact produce cardiovascular and diabetes and other benefits still need to be discovered. And I'm sorry if my answer is not a positive, clear yes or no. Professor Bonner, you would like to make a comment? Uh, anyway, we have an studies uh, and uh, uh, yeah, I think please. we don't understand fully at the moment the relationship uh, uh, between diet and my, my microbiota. Uh, some food are able to promote good my, microbiota, while another food are destroying the beneficial microbiota. Uh, and this can uh, be different at any country and any population group, uh, maybe with, with a strong genetic component. And this is very, very important in the four years of life and as related to breastfed. Mm -hmm. So it's a interesting point to take into account if you are going to start any research related to um, diet, so we can uh, modify microbiota from a um, early point in life and maximize the benefit. But we need to understand how to influence uh, good microbiota through um, diet and some and functional foods. <laughs> okay, th thank you very much, Professor Bueno. I would also yeah. like to very quickly add that Professor Bueno has uh, a couple of colleagues in her faculty who are experts in research in microbiota. So, what you heard from her is based not just on general knowledge, but of actual experience of research concerning microbiome. Uh, in her department. Okay, very rightly, Professor Khalid, you said that there are specific uh, probiotics. 
I mean, if you talk about the uh, elective bachelors, bifurcated bacterium, they are going to public. And we are going beyond time, uh, Professor Shoka. Yes, yes, okay. Okay, sir, sir, sir. Okay. Shoka, sir, we are we have we have gone out of time. So I, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Muhammad Said for word of thanks. No, thank you very much, uh, all the participants. Now, very briefly, I would like to say again, uh, thanks to Professor Dr. Javed Akram, Professor Dr. Khalid Said Khan, Professor Dr. Arora Biono, uh, our chairman, sir, Professor, then our rector, the University of Islamabad, Professor Shaukat Parvesh, sir, then uh, the faculty, the students, all the participants who participated. I'm really thankful. I'm grateful to very especially our international speakers uh, and Professor Khala Saeed and Professor Arora Biono. I, I will remain obliged, really. And, uh, I'm grateful to uh, Professor Javed Ekram, basically, who introduced uh, me to both of these uh, guests. So thank you very much, the chairmanship of the uh, university because I am speaking on his behalf. Our chairman, Board of Governors, uh, was supposed to join, but unfortunately he had to leave the city for some and uh, he was not able to join us. So I am speaking on his behalf and saying thanks to all the participants again. So may Allah bless us all. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, now uh, it's a time for ending the ceremony. I'm really thankful to all my guest speakers uh, that uh, they make our event so successful. So Allah bless everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, all. Thank you. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Sugar, alhamdulillah. It was very, very Students, thank you so much. आप लोग आप बहुत शुक्रिया आप लोगों का students. अगर हम काट देंगे तो ये सब रह जाएंगे. ये मैं कह रही हूँ. Remove participants. ये ना रिमूव कितने रह गए हैं बेटा यू ऑल स्टूडेंट्स आर लिस्टिंग
Then 